Different type of video today. I have a guest on, and we just kind of talk about the full landscape of college football. His name is Matt. He's my brother, and he's a Longhorn. Yes, he's a Texas grad. He has his own Texas Longhorn football YouTube channel with a couple of his buddies. I'll link it in the description below in case you need a place to go take out the trash or talk trash. Good guy. We talk a lot of college football. We talk about each other's teams. We don't talk too much about our own teams. Like I talk about Texas. He talks about Texas A&M. We kind of give some feedback there. Talk about a couple other major names in the landscape of college football. It was a great time. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here you go. All right, let's be real. All right, let's throw, throw the coaching out the past five and seven, App State, throw that out in a vacuum. This team is talented, all right? I think y'all have probably the best receiver core in the SEC, maybe like top five in the country with Stewart, Moose, Muhammad, and apparently Noah Thomas is supposed to be good. I've never seen him in my play in my life. But Neither have we, but we believe it. Yeah, so – Evan Stewart's the real deal. I uh, wish we had him. O-line was a problem last year for y'all. Um, yeah. But it was young. Most of it's back. I think Bryce Foster's healthy now, question mark. Um, Fathery was good as a freshman. Kind of took some lumps last year, I want to say. Uh, Donovan Green just tore his ACL, but y'all have a bunch of good tight ends. So I think y'all will be fine. Very sad. Donovan Green's a great Aggie. Continue. I was a Wigman truther from the beginning. And I was a Haynes King hater from the beginning. And as it's playing out, I'm very I'm very accurate with um, how this is projecting. I thought Wigman would be a really good player for y'all, and he's starting to show that. But it's kind of weird seeing Max Johnson take a lot of the run with the first team. I mean, I don't know. You know better than I do. Is it, like, clearly Wigman at this point, or is it still? Well, we think it's clearly Wigman, but the coaching staff and others will have you say it's a true battle. I think it's a true battle. I think they're going to give Max Johnson his fair shake because – he has shown that he is actually a pretty good quarterback, so they're going to let him battle it out. We'll find out in a couple of weeks, but continue. Sorry. Either way, I think I'll come with both those guys, but I think the Wigman has the higher ceiling. I yes. like Max Johnson. Agreed. Defense, uh, a lot of good pieces. I love Bryce Anderson. Yes. Really good. Um, the whole D line, McKinley Jackson. Um, so you Walter know about Nolan. Bryce Anderson. I thought he was a secret, but okay. Apparently the Longhorns no. know about him. We wanted a Longhorns know all about Bryce Anderson. Oh, yeah, that's right. We nearly had him. I saw a picture of him in a Texas jersey today. Anyway, yeah. continue. Um, is Edgar and Cooper back? Yes, he is. Yes, okay. he, is. I, he was in one of my um, make-or-break players lists this year. I think he has to be good for this team to take that next level because he is, like, the premier linebacker this year, as he was last year. Didn't take a huge leap, but we, we expect there's a leap still in the chamber. But go on. Yeah, he's back. Mar Turner, um, Fadil Diggs. Yeah, there's a lot of good pieces on this team. I mean, I think I think linebacker is still a question mark for y'all. I mean, that's fair. Um, missing out on Anthony Hill and Harold Perkins back to back. Ouch! Like that would have been what the doctor ordered and <laughs> didn't get it. But okay, so now thanks for reminding Okay, me. so basically on paper this roster looks really good, but last year's roster looked really good too. Um, but Same they they roster. were young. They were young yes. last year. Yes. A lot of freshmen um, getting that baptized by fire and it should pay off this year and next year more so next year yeah uh i like the schedule the win total is seven and a half is that what it is that is correct that's what we're going off of it's seven and a half um i agree miami in week two is probably the swing game on the entire season and probably the win total um yep i think Al auburn at home should be a win he freezes dangerous but that's so early in his tenure he doesn't have a quarterback yet that's a win arkansas with KJ Jefferson, it's going to be scrappy. That's going to be a dogfight uh, always. I think y'all split Bama and Tennessee. So I'm, I'm counting four losses. I think LSU is a loss. One of those. Actually, no. No, no, no. Hold up. I actually have A&M going over on seven and a half, but not by much. I think this is an eight and four team with nine and three also on the table if some things fall the right way. Uh, I think they'll win at Miami. Um, Beat Auburn. So let's start off 4-0, I think. And I think they'll drop, lose to Arkansas, actually, for whatever. I just have this Sam Pittman energy that I feel like Sam Pittman's kind of got Jimbo's number. That's how it's going to start trending here soon. And Peter Jefferson. Would it change your mind if I told you they travel to Baton Rouge the week before they play us and we play Auburn? Would that change anything for you? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> uh. I think we're both going to beat Bama this year, actually. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking Arkansas, Tennessee, and LSU is the, the losses for sure. And I think at Ole Miss is obviously tough. 
they got some good transfers in there, and I like uh, Jackson Dart. And Lane Kiffin's always um, scrappy. And then Hale State, of course, is – well, they – rest in peace, Mike Leach. But they always give you all trouble historically, but I think they'll take a step back. Both Mississippi schools, yeah. Yeah, and then South Carolina's no, no slouch either. They'll do some easy wins for you all because they were bad, but now Beamer's got it rolling. So I just, I just see all these slip-up games that are possible for you all, and it's a definitely a tougher schedule than we have because – over the years, I feel like Texas has had like deceptively tough schedules, where it's kind of comparable if you look at it to y'all's. But this year, I think y'all clearly have a way tougher schedule than us. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna take the over, but it's a hard schedule. So if y'all had our schedule, I think y'all'd be in like a ten win, ten win range for sure. Yeah. But, but that's my thought. So what do you think Jimbo needs to do? I mean, do you think Jimbo's job becomes safe with eight wins, or do you think nine wins are bust on the year? Because a lot of Aggies I talk to, myself included, we think that we need to win nine games or else we're feeling terrible. Because you're probably going to win for sure three or four out-of-conference games. So if you're only winning eight games, you're probably only winning four SEC games. So going 500 against the SEC feels really bad. Is a big difference. Like, I want a winning record in the SEC. I, w- I want to win five SEC games. That's the goal. So what do you think? At eight and four, what's up with Jimbo? It depends on the peripheral. Like, what's going on? Yes. Like, who would you all hire? Would it be McGuire from Texas Tech? Is he available? I think Jeff Trailer would be an amazing hire for A&M. He's got the East Texas uh, ties. I mean, he's a great recruiter. He's a great culture builder. And um, if you put him at a school like A&M with the resources, it would be – It'd be a problem, kind of like a Mac Brown hire, but maybe even better than that, like in terms of like the fit. Um, so I think if UTSA goes like 12 and 0 again, and Jimbo kind of flames out, gets blown up at LSU down the line, I think you could get Trailer for real cheap. But also Mike Elko is a guy you like. I do um, love Mike Elko, but we're really not hoping for this. We don't yeah. want any of this to be on the table. We think I think at eight wins, they still retain Jimbo, yeah. but we're kind of in limbo. We're not feeling great. Like, we're kind of in the same boat as we are now, next year. Right. And I don't know what the next steps would be. But nine wins, I'm feeling really good because the next year, most of the team's back yet again. And you have a slightly easier schedule. We play y'all at home. I just feel like nine wins is kind of the make or break situation for the year. But I respect the over. I did not expect it. Even though the 7.5 seems kind of conservative, I feel like a and should surpass that based on their talent versus the opposing team's talent. But, yeah, you surprised me there. I guess I, I guess we're hitting the over. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, man. I think this team could be really good. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, it, the, the talent's there. I mean, it's like top four roster in the country probably based on recruiting rankings. Yeah. And they're getting older now. so. Yep. Sophomore year for most of them, that 2022 class. Sophomores. All right, let's do your side of things. Oh, yeah. All right. So y'all are super talented this year. Y'all are really, really good. And I mean, I don't have to tell you the names. I don't know all the names. Like you knew a lot of Aggies. I was surprised there. I know you have, I think your linebacker is Ford. That guy's like a superstar. Uh, which are the two D tackles, the two D linemen that are back? What are the two big ones? Andre Sweat, Byron Murphy. Those guys are really good. Yeah. You have a super experienced secondary. You add cattle onto it from Arkansas, which is crazy. So that seems really beneficial healthy it's and healthy. then you have every toy sart could ever want on offense right i mean you have everything right you have like five nfl receivers four or five nfl receivers you don't know what you have at running back but it seems like you'll have the talent to replace it kind of like what we're thinking for our running back room i mean y'all lose that's your biggest loss right there on the team right is it running back you're too deep is gone and they were superstars for you your o-line awesome. top yeah. 10 in the country top five in the country really good would you agree with that Oh, for sure. Every turn, all five starters, Kelvin Banks. Yeah. yeah. And then Quinn Ewers. I mean, he has really good receivers. He has a good O-line. I think he showed enough last year to make you think that he's going to be legit with another year of experience, another year of chemistry with his players. But I'm so hesitant to like give you all like the undefeated season that I think your team could have. I'm so hesitant to do that because, I mean, you start the year at Alabama. I mean, we don't know what Alabama really is yet because it's just so much turnover, so much new lack of known playmakers, quarterback issues. I mean, that is such a question mark game for y'all, such a toss-up at this point because I think on paper y'all are better, but it's Nick Saban, Alabama. I mean, is that even like an official analysis, but it's Nick Saban? 
I don't know if I can give that a win. I don't know if I can let that be a win for y'all. I don't know if that's a win. And what's the over under? Nine point five, right? Yeah. Nine and a half. So I'm going to count that Bama game as a loss. I know you think you're winning it. I know a lot of people think you're going to win it. I'm going to count it as a loss. And then do you slip up in the Big 12? I have a question for you. What is one thing that this year's Texas Longhorns in the landscape of the Big 12 and the last national champion Texas Longhorns have in common? You probably won't guess what I'm thinking, but. This this team to the 2005 team? Yeah. Um. I really like the secondary. Um, okay, good one. I was going to say Oklahoma is probably in a down era. Oh. That's, that's something that y'all both – that's something the two years have in common. You, I mean, Oklahoma could be improved this year. We'll talk about them in a second. But they're not the Oklahoma of old with, you know, their superstar quarterbacks, Lincoln Riley. I mean, it's a different – they're in transition right now. So it's a much more manageable game. I mean, what's – do you want to say it? What was the score last year? 49-0. We won by seven touchdowns. Yeah. I think you have to stop that pretty soon, but we'll let you say it until the season starts. Is that in your uh, Twitter name, 49-0? I got rid of it recently. Oh, but it was in yours. I was making a joke. I didn't realize that. Okay. <laughs> so Kansas State, TCU. The thing about Texas, I want – okay, I, it, like on paper 11-1, and one, but you slip up to games every year. That's right. Every year. And despite what the expectations are – you seem to come up just a little bit short every year. So I'm going to give you the over, but I'm saying you're 10-2. and two. That's my prediction. That's fair. So a loss at Alabama. I'm calling the Bama game a loss. I think they find a way to win it, even though you should yeah. win it. You have the most, like, the most winning asset in football right now, and that is a potential quarterback, wide receiver, like elite hookup there. Like elite yeah. receivers, good enough quarterback. I don't know how good he's going to be. I'm going to say he's going to be good enough. But I still think at Alabama, second game of the year, you get them at a good time. If you get them later, they're probably gelling. You can still get them at a good time, but I just still can't count against them at home. They're going to be rocking because they know they're in danger. They know, they're a, they know their season – I mean, they have to play SEC West Slate, so their season is pretty much on the line versus y'all. That's one of the winnable home games for them, even though y'all are really good. So it's not a win, and then y'all slip up somewhere. You get the easier – is it safe to say you have the easier two between the newbies, BYU and Houston? Houston is yeah. definitely one of the easier two. For sure. Uh, yeah. It's like we, we traded out West Virginia on the road and Oklahoma State at home for at Houston and BYU at home. That's a that's, that's a, a major a yeah, major W. And I know you have tech at home, but they're probably better than most would expect this year. I just see a second slip up somewhere. I can't pin it. I at mean, if TCU. I were to put money on it, I would say maybe Kansas at home, something like that. Yeah. I mean, Kansas State, sorry. Not that Kansas is any kind of pushover this year. They're going to be better than normal. But, yeah, 10-2. and two. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I tend to agree with you. If I was betting my life savings on it, I'd probably I'd go over it. But I'd also say 10-2. and two. Yeah. Because um, this team just feels, like, so ready to make a run. Like, it's I've, – I've been, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid for years and, like, been let down for years. I remember you saying so 2018 hesitant. was your year. Yeah, so I'm hesitant, of course. But this team, like, you look across the board, there's really not any flaws. But Texas finds a way to screw things up ever since Mac Brown left. So yeah, I think that's fair. I think we'll probably slip up somewhere along the way and kind of ruin a, a perfect right. you know, playoff run. And I would say it's a high floor on a ceiling. I think the, se- the, the schedule is manageable enough to where I think you're winning 10 games. But I will say this. I mean, if you don't win 10 games – the opinion of Sark is going to start shifting at Texas. I mean, can he do it as a head coach? If not now, when? This is the most talented versus the most manageable roster you're going to have for the next few years, probably. So, I mean, yeah. it's like do or die for Sark, kind of. Not not literally, but it feels like the perception will start shifting a little bit. Yeah, no, I agree. He needs to win the Big 12 this year for sure. Cause it's, and I don't think we'll fire Sark even if he has a bad year, like 7-5. and Because I think we're going to let the Arch Manning – era play out yeah but but yeah he needs to have some urgency and he does i mean he definitely he's been vocal about this needs we need it one seems like it yeah, yeah. I, I see that i just i can't escape the second the slip up the one slip up and hopefully there's not two because if there's two it feels real bad but 10 and 2 i think is a reasonable i think that could be like a floor like reasonably thinking i think you're going to probably win 10 games but if you slip up that's bad okay let's move on to a couple of other teams we're going to quickly go through i'm surprised we both picked the overs 
They seem like low overs. There would be no ball. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the overs were really low, so it was kind of easy for us. Yeah. Let's just do a couple other pertinent teams that are kind of close to our programs. Um, why don't we do Alabama, since we both play them. Common opponent on the year. So we were just talking a little bit about them. I mean, is it safe to say this is like expected to be a down year? Is that is that safe to are those safe words to use to describe them? Yeah, it's like the first time since two thousand and eight, two thousand seven, where you look at Bama and you're like, okay, like, is this the old Bama still? Like, like is this the end of their dynasty? Because like dynasties typically don't last fifteen plus years. Yeah, it should um, be at the end of its lifespan, probably. Yeah, that's what we're wondering. But just when you think that Saban pulls a rabbit out of the hat and ends up with like a one of his best teams ever, um, so yeah, this this is a really Interesting year for Saban. So ten and a half over under for Bama. I mean, it's not an easy schedule. They go at A and M. At Auburn's always tricky for them, but who knows what Auburn is? They probably shouldn't really hold a candle to Bama. LSU and Tennessee at home. I feel like this is another ten win team right here. Maybe nine ten win team. Is that disrespectful to Nick Saban in Alabama? Um. See, it is disrespectful, but I feel like it's valid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just – it. I'm looking at the schedule, and they do have most of their tough games at home. I want to say LSU yeah, at home, sure. Tennessee at home. I mean, their tough road games are at Auburn, at A&M. Yeah. So, they get Texas at home. So, the, the schedule is kind of – I mean, for an SEC schedule, it's more favorable than normal. At Kentucky is kind of a weird matchup. They yeah. never play them. So, I don't know, man. I, I think it all comes down to – what they roll out at quarterback. I think Milrow has to be the guy if they want to have that ceiling yeah. of uh, being, you know, a playoff contender. And You're not a Buckner believer? No, not at all. Uh, I'm not a are. believer of any – like, who's, who they hired that – forget his name, the Notre Dame OC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reese, Tommy Reese, something like that. Yeah. I'm not a believer of him either. So, I think that – they're and they're even, they've even – they're trying to go more old, old school Bama, you know, load the box – Yes. Run down your throat. And I think Milrow would be perfect for that. You know, those, those yeah. reads with Milrow, that'd be lethal. That's what I'm terrified of when we play Bama. Only way we lose this game is if Milrow just starts running all over us with, like, keepers and, like, like Taysom Hill did at BYU. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty lethal on the ground. I yeah. mean, we'll tell you that firsthand. I mean, he wasn't great in the air at all that game, but he can definitely run it. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it's a 10-win team, but, of course, not surprised if this team wins 11 or 12 games. I mean, would anybody be surprised? Yeah, the O line's great. The D, the D should be better than it was last year, even though they lose Will Anderson, I think. Yeah. So everything's like the the structure's there, but the receivers aren't like they used to be with with Sark and all those rugs yeah. and all those guys. And uh, the quarterbacks question mark. Uh, I like the running backs, but they don't really have a Najee yet that we know of. They might That's like as thing. a freshman. That's the thing, and you can kind of say that about the receivers. I mean, maybe even the quarterbacks. Bama recruits at the highest possible level in sports. The players are there. We just don't know who they are yet or if they're ready now. They've gotten top two classes for the last, like, five years in a row. So, I mean, the talent's there. When will it be ready? Will it be ready in quick enough time to make this season, like, a playoff type of season? I guess that's the question. And, then, yeah, it's good you all get them early because if you got them later, I think they're going to be a different team. So, I'm saying 10 wins. We're both hitting the over, right? Well, it's 10 and a half. I'm taking, oh, it was ten and a half. I'm, I'm hitting the under. I believe so. I believe yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm taking the under because I think I think well, if I'm betting on Texas to beat Alabama, then I, they have to run the table the rest of the way with that schedule. Um, no, I think that I think they're a ten, maybe even nine and three. Yep, I'm under. Yeah, under. Say, I feel good about it. But once again, not surprised if it goes the other way. All right, let's talk OU. Now Sooners. you're going to be more well versed in the OU world. The way I feel about them. I like Dylan Gabriel. I feel like he was out a lot last year. Is that right? Like, didn't didn't play a lot of games. He missed some games. He missed some key games, and they and they, they lost you, you could games. tell. You could tell. Yeah. So he's back. He's healthy. I do like him. I mean, what's the over under here? Nine and a half. That seems high for a team that's coming off of a six and seven record. Yeah. I know they had a really good recruiting class, but they're going to be freshmen. They have some good players on defense, but they've never been known to be like an elite defensive team. Maybe you can speak to that. And they play – oh, they're one of the teams. Them and Georgia both benefit from the SEC being expedited until next year because if it was in the 2025 season that we thought it was originally going to be or 2026, they would have yeah. been playing each other this year. 
right. and next year. Since since they couldn't reciprocate the rivalry, they just got rid of the game. And what team was added here for that? One of these SMU. Of SMU was added. So a much easier opponent than Georgia. Even though it would have been at home, that's a loss. I can almost guarantee that. So they definitely benefit from that, and that will add to their win total. So they're starting 3-0. and but Then they get tough tests at Cincinnati. Iowa State, how's Iowa State this year? You tell me. Do you know? Dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. So manageable game before Texas, which is good for them. UCF respectable. At Kansas and at Oklahoma State, like a sneaky double the, away the team. The last bedlam dual. on the road. The last bedlam. Kansas State before it as a potential like trap game, plus Kansas is going to be sneaky better than usual this year. Yeah. So that's a tough little stretch right there. Texas going down to Oklahoma State. I know West Virginia is not that good, right? No, they're dumpster fire. Yeah, big time. Happy fire. while you late in the season though. That could be dicey. Playing up against the thirty year old. Even yeah. if they suck, that that could be a weird game at ten. Dude, PM. they're gonna be so up for that game. Yeah. Night game after dark. Yeah. Weird stadium, playing against men. Yeah. Yeah, we've That's, been we've been there before and it's not fun. Yeah, it doesn't seem very fun. I'm hitting the under on this and I'm pretty confident in it. I think this is a nine team nine win season at best. And I'm very surprised that it's set at nine and a half and not eight and a half. I feel like eight and a half is more compelling, but this is how Vegas baits you. They know what they're doing. What do you think? I tend to, it's nine and a half, right? I, I, yeah. So they miss Texas Tech and they miss Kansas State, two True. of the upper half teams of the Big 12. At Cincinnati is a tough replacement, though, as far as replacements have go. Like replacements go, they could have been Houston, but still, yes, that's better. Yeah, that's going to be first Big 12 game ever for Cincinnati. That's going to be a tricky They get two spot. of those. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. It's going to be tricky for them. Yeah, they're definitely going to hit the under. I mean, it's just I'm questioning Venables as a head coach very hard, and I know Sooners fans are too. They probably won't say it yet, but I see shades of Charlie Strong in him. Uh, just kind of the job seems a little too big for him. Um, he's not – I mean, we'll see this year. I mean, if, if Dylan Gabriel was healthy all last year, they'd probably be like an eight-win team, eight and four. Yes. So – the trajectory would look a lot different. So if Gabriel stays healthy, they do have Jackson Arnold now as a backup, which yeah. is way better than that, whatever that guy was that was in against us. He was horrible. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the under, but I think that they're right at it, like 9-3. Yeah. I think they lose to Texas. I think they lose to uh, – they lose in Bedlam, and they lose somewhere else. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, you pick the next team then. Uh, let's do the uh, – not Georgia. They're going to go undefeated. Let's do LSU and the Vols, and then get out of here. All right. LSU, they return basically the same team as last year, which I say is great, but you lost to a terrible Texas A&M team. So what does that say about the team? I don't know. It's a first-year coach. <laughs> it's a first-year coach. It's a first-year coach. I mean, it was a transition year, and they overperformed, so that really bodes well for their chances going forward. They have great talent everywhere. I mean, they start the season really tough. So why don't you go ahead and give me your rundown, and I'll give you mine. See, um, I love their front seven. I love Harold Perkins. I love Brian Kelly as as a concept. I love uh, their quarterback. He's I don't love him, but he's good. Uh, I like their receivers from yeah, Big Neighbors. That's how I feel. Um, and LSU always spawns these good players out of nowhere, and I think they'll continue to do that. I think we'll know if this is going to go over or under after week one. If yeah. They, if I, Florida State LSU game, no, like that's such an interesting game because like the winner's gonna emerge as a playoff caliber contender. Yes. And uh, the loser might end up, you know, kind of fringe top twenty-five at the end of the year. Yeah. So the schedules at Bama, Florida at home, A and M at home. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over for sure. I think I think LSU finds a way to beat Florida State. Even though LSU's having fights at practices most recently, I think they'll find a way. I'm told that's normal and that should be expected. I know in my college fall camp there was a fight and people got kicked out of practice, but then the next day it was as if nothing happened. So yeah. that's pretty normal. But anyway, yeah, go on. Sorry. They get Army at home and randomly in the middle of the year. That that's so be, weird. That could be sneaky uh, right before Bama. <laughs> yeah. Does Army um, still run the option stuff? I believe so. Yeah, that's always weird. But I just – I think – I really am high on LSU. I think they're probably the team that's going to win the West. Um, I thought I was – had them in the playoffs all offseason, but recently I changed my mind on that. But I still think they'll be a good SEC contender. Who replaced them in your playoffs? Um, I think USC. Oh, I thought it was going to be Texas. Uh, well, Texas is in there. They've been in there oh, the whole time. Oh, they were time. there before. They've okay. been in there the whole time. Okay. 
So you're hitting over there, winning the West. They're going to beat A&M at home, right? Um, Is that how you feel? They could lose that game. I think I, I think it's Revenge a toss on the minds. I mean, we ruined their perfect ending to their year last year. But then again, they won in some bullshit fashion the last time we were in Baton Rouge. So I feel like we have some revenge on the mind with that game, too. And Damani Richardson's back, and he got hosed that game. So anyway, the Aggies know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is that play oh, where he yeah. stripped them? I remember watching this guy at the back patio. Yeah. And I was like, oh, a and just won it. They just stripped that yeah. guy. And he was going crazy. And then they just blew it dead, and they didn't even, like, review it. Or so they, I think they – I'm blanking on it a little bit, but I think they blew it dead due to, like, lack of continuation or whatever. Our forward progress. He wasn't even being tackled, though. He's no, just kind of he just, standing just there. just took it away. I know. It was – anyway. So, Knox revenge Johnson. on the mind for Damani, but he's only one man. So He's still, he's still at a That's crazy. Fifth-year starter. He started every game. I don't think he's missed a game. Oh, he missed a half from targeting last year. But, yeah, that's crazy. He's back. So, yeah, that's a tough game. I mean, I think as I think through my A&M prediction, that keeps coming up as a loss to me and a huge win for LSU because I, I think we're going to be pretty good this year. Not great, but pretty good. I haven't given my win-loss prediction on the year yet, so I'm not doing that yet, but I think we're going to be good, guys. Um, but I think that's a loss for a and I feel like it is. I haven't made that my pick yet, but I lean that way, and because of that, I think I'm hitting the over for them. I think they beat Florida State. I think they're better than Florida State. Yeah. And the over-under set at 9.5, I think this is a 10-win team. I mean, it's 9 through 11 is where they're going to finish, so I think it's safe to say 10 is the most – expected landing for the for their team this year at Bama that's that's tough but Bama could be beatable we don't know so I mean maybe there's a chance they can win that game so if they do that I mean they have a chance to be an 11 or undefeated team on the year because their first half is pretty manageable if they can get past Florida State so we're both hitting the over on this yeah I see LSU getting to the Atlanta with the playoff berth in the line and just getting obliterated by Georgia <laughs> do you want to do Georgia let's uh should we just quickly do Georgia Yes, yeah, it'll be fast. Undefeated. Over. Over. What was I, it? It's 11 and a half or is it 10 and a half? If it's 10 and a half, I'm... No, I think it's 11. I just don't think that. I didn't even put them on here. I think it's 11. We're going to say it's 11. They have to go undefeated to hit the over. And I'm hitting that. I'm, if I'm... I'm putting money on the over here. This but is the wrong scale. Let's be real. In, at, in Knoxville... That is true. With... Uh, if Mil- What's his name? Milton? If Joe Milton's the real deal like they're hyping him up to be, and you know how crazy that place can get when they're last year against Bama. Emotional, That's not, that, that could be a loss. Um, True. Other than that, at Auburn, always scary. Jordan Hare is scary. Yes, that weird place. Freeze's big first game at home. Yep. That'll be not easy. And we don't know how good Carson Beck's going to be, but I would imagine even if he's just average, they're still going to have a really good team around him. So Yeah, and then at like Vanderbilt. Stetson. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's either they lose to Tennessee or they don't. I mean, yes, weird things happen, but the talent discrepancy with Auburn is just major right now. So it's do you think they beat Tennessee or not? That so is a yeah, soft schedule. That's Holy the crap. Well, there's supposed to be an OU in there, so you can't yeah. – I don't blame Georgia. I mean, that happens, so they're going to be playing OU maybe every other year for a while. All right, let's do Tennessee since we're just talking about them. So this is like, in my opinion, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it Hendon Hooker or was it Josh Heifel's offense that made them great? If it was Hendon Hooker – they're going to be much worse this year because they lose him and their two best receivers. If it's Josh Heifel's offense, that weird super hurry up they run, and that's what's making them so good, I think Milton's a great guy to put into that system and have them be good. So it's like, what what is the reason they're good? Is it Heifel's offense or was it the talent that they had last year? Because Heifel's back. He has tools. He has toys. We don't know if they're – they're not probably not as good as what they had last year, but they've been in the system for a year now. They have good enough players. What is it set at? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. I think they beat A&M. This is another one of the A&M losses. I know I'm two A&M losses in a row I've mentioned, but these are the two toughest games on the schedule in my opinion because it's at Tennessee after we play Bama and after they have a bye week. Now, we can win that game, but I wouldn't bet on that. Even if we're super talented and really good, that's just a really tough spot to be in. So that's one of their toss up. That's one of their tougher games on the year, I think. I'm in my opinion, and I think they win it. So that bodes well for their over. And then they play. They're one of the teams that play Bama and Georgia every year, which is tough. I think they're the only team that does that. Um, Auburn. Auburn does. That's right. So they're they're are they splitting that? I mean, they're probably gonna lose both, right? 
I would Bama. guess if you're betting your money, they're going to lose both. Because I think even though Bama's kind of in a questionable area, I don't think Tennessee's that great. I think they um, – I think they lose two games. I'm going over. I'm going to go under. I, here's here's what I see. You see that, that week four game? The UTSA Roadrunners, the fighting Frank Harris's We're coming from in. San Antonio. Yeah, and we played UTSA last year. And, man, that quarterback – was way more difficult for our defense to handle than Bryce Young. Um, and I'm serious when I say that. He what? was so good. Okay. And they have some good receivers back. Jeff Trailer's a maniac. I'm telling you all, A&M needs to hire him if things go south. They're not going to go south. Continue. Um, I think they start off 3-0. They lose in Knoxville to UTSA. And then that just kind of just deflates the entire season for them, and they kind of just spiral. Uh, but So, yeah, because of that. And then the Bama, A and M, Georgia, all in the back half, and South Carolina too is good now. I think yeah. they end up like eight and four, seven and five. I think the chicken came before the egg, and the chicken is Hendon Hooker. Yeah, so I'm taking the under. That's definitely a possibility. But yeah, so they lost their best receivers, their quarterback. Is it real? Is it not? All right, last one. I know you wanted to say some kind words about Texas Tech, so I'm not going to predict this one. I'll just let you say what you want to say about them. They're supposed to be pretty good this year. What was the number? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah, Texas Tech fans have gotten really outspoken this offseason. They've gotten really courageous. They think they're about to win the national championship. They think the recruiting landscape has changed in the state of Texas because a five-star legacy is leaning their way. So I think this is a year of dose of reality. They won a lot of games in weird fashions, you know, huge comebacks like by going forward on fourth down, injuries to quarterbacks, Dylan Gabriel to, to win games late, uh, Quinn Ewers being out. So I think this season they – I think – and then Joey McGuire is saying, like, they got 14 points better than they were last year. Like, how do you even quantify that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I All these kind reasons, of equations I, think, I think they're overhyping themselves. It's in their heads. They had one Texas Bowl win, talking trash against the SEC for beating Ole Miss. Um, I think they're going to get slapped around by Oregon in week two. But it is at home, so that could be – It's a fun game. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I wish I could watch I'm glad it. A&M plays it. 3.30 that day. You're going to watch that over Texas Bama? I'm going to have two screens up. Okay. I'll, be sc- I'll be streaming it in Bryant-Denny. Um, <laughs> at West Virginia. I mean, the schedule's really not horrible, but they're going to lose to Texas. They miss OU. Um, at Kansas That's crazy. is a loss. TCU is a loss. Kansas State's a loss. I think this team's going to end up going like – they might go over, actually, now that I'm looking at it. They might hit eight wins, but I think they're more of a 6-6 six and six team. I think this is a uh, – an imposter program right now. I think it's the, the bubble's about to burst. So. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, well, that concludes the teams we wanted to talk about today. Just a quick note, we will be going to the Tennessee A&M game. A, uh, Texas's schedule happens to have its bye week that week, so we're going to go with our dad, who had surgery today. He wanted us to shout him out. I don't know if he was a little buzzing off of the, the chemicals that were coursing through his veins, but... He, he was like, I like to be in video, so make sure I'm in this video. Even though he had never been in one before, but he, that's what came to his mind. So shout out to Tony. But all right, guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.